especially lunch parties. I'm not talking about the dinners, but maybe lunch parties. If any birthday celebration or any uh, office celebration, especially during office hours, is uh, integrated with some healthy eating, then it will become part of the culture. Automatically, people will not demand things which are unhealthy for them. Then similarly, if every day when you open your laptop, obviously you get good mails, you get bad mails, you get mails saying not dispatched, product not sent, vendor not available, cash not available. So if, if all these mails are what are going to follow, but if the first mail of the day is a health message, then we start our day with two things. One is with some positivity and second is with some actionable plan. See, today it's very important to have small actionable plans rather than climb a Himalaya mountain overnight. We cannot climb a Himalayan mountain overnight. But every day, if we have one health tip in our email box, then it starts our day very well in terms of what we can do. Similarly, I uh, uh, have done this in our organization and, and this is something which was very useful. We have healthy potlucks. Now, a potluck is fundamentally that uh, all the managers, they get one healthy dish from their house and everybody eats together. So this was, I think, quite successful and uh, everybody enjoyed. So if we are converting it to a healthy potluck where everybody gets one dish and everybody is sharing in that healthy dish, not only people get a flavor of new foods, but it's also a nice bonding for the teams. The second thing is support the health culture with tools. Like we all know that we need tools while a good intention is very important. But tools are also required for that good intention to actually transfer into some outcomes. And since it's all a management uh, group today, I can talk about key outcomes. See, because we all ask our juniors that what is the outcome of that? What, what is the re return on what we have done? So the outcome is very important. If we have to uh, get that outcome, the health culture has to be supported with tools. Now, what are the kind of tools? We can have virtual health camps. Like today, we are having a webinar. I'm sure there are wonderful uh, health doctors available and uh, people with the uh, stress, uh, people who are dealing in the area of stress management, people who are otherwise connected to the ecosystem of health care. Uh, so why should we stop after COVID? Why not continue this uh, kind of a interaction with different, different doctors, different, different health providers for our own teams? And also the best thing is that it's not expensive. I remember that when uh, two years back, I used to suggest to some of our, uh, you know, the associations that why don't I do a webinar and uh, because you'll be spending so much money on a flight and a hotel and there's the huge carbon footprint. So at that time, it was not the, it was not the protocol. I can say it was not the protocol, but today I think this, all, this has become a pro protocol where meetings and webinars and seminars are being held uh, in a way which is actually saving the planet uh, of its carbon footprint. So, you know, the carbon footprint is low and saving the pla uh, planet for, uh, you know, the kind of fumes which a jet engine creates. Second thing is that weight management is a area which most people only do it if there's a wedding coming or there's a uh, anniversary coming but if it is built into our health and lifestyle uh, then because weight is a measurable parameter the reason i'm mentioning weight is because weight is a measurable parameter so weight blood sugar cholesterol readings these are measurable parameters and if uh, these kind of tools are available like for example we also have a health app and there are many good health apps, but I think I'll uh, later on show you the health app. Uh, so we have good health apps where you can actually download that health app and you can measure your uh, progress. There are many trackers which, where you can measure your progress. So connected devices. Now, when I started looking at uh, preventive healthcare, I was very conscious that preventive healthcare should not only be available to a small group of people who can afford, but it should be available to a larger group of people who can get it at a very low cost. And I found that these connected devices are very useful. Like for example, I think some of you are also wearing trackers, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're wearing the health tracker, some of uh, people. So this health tracker is very nice because 
every day it is showing you a number of how much you walked, um, how good was your sleep, and what is your heart rate. So these trackers put some sort of a discipline into our lives. Uh, and we have also launched uh, our health tracker, uh, which, uh, uh, or rather, sorry, we'll be launching a health tracker. It's in the final stages of testing. So what we're trying to say is that with very small expense, one can actually become healthy, but doesn't need to have very expensive medical uh, bills to be healthy. The two things which are very important, which I'll be discussing uh, later would also be the importance of gut health. So for some of you who may be looking at uh, uh, free diet plans, we have launched an uh, app called Vedic Diet App, uh, which is obviously inspired from Ayurveda. And it has Ayurvedic nutrition and herbs and everything. So if somebody wants to know the name, it's called Vedic, V-E-D-I-Q-U-E. -E. It's a Vedic Diet App. And I'll request Nitin at the end of the session to actually put it up on the screen after we finish. Okay. Uh, the next thing is that gamification. Now, all of us have been children once and thank God for it because my nephew and niece think I was like always old. But uh, we all were children once and we all remember how much we used to love playing. I think that is what needs to come into healthcare. Gamification of health because otherwise health becomes something which is another uh, or another job which we have to do and many people then do not want to do it. So what is the gamification? It means that we can have different teams creating different goals and objectives. The goal could be around weight loss, it could be around running, it could be around exercises, it could be around drinking water. It could be around how many people take the stairs instead of the lift. So like this what happens is now exercise is not only or health is not only about an individual because it's it's very well known that we are that we as human beings are a social animal which means we want to connect with others we cannot imagine a life alone in fact a, a life alone is stressful for us and a life alone is actually a prison that's what if somebody commits a mistake or a crime their punishment is you live alone otherwise food is there and uh, they get a place to sleep and they don't have to do much work. So instead of it being happy for them, it is a prison. Prison is a sad place because they are cut off from society. Their freedom is taken away. Their interaction is taken away. So what I'm trying to suggest is that when we gamify health, when we have these small goals where teams within our companies are uh, you know, contesting for those health goals, then you don't have to push anybody to be healthy. It becomes part of the culture and it's fun. If health is fun, it is doable. If health is not fun, then it is not doable. It is not possible because we have so much other things to look after. Families, children, profession, employees. So, it, so health is the last priority. Fundamentally, I think health is the last priority for everyone. Now, another thing which is possible is all these tie-ups, whether it is uh, your local fitness uh, or your... Uh, uh, companies which uh, might be doing something interesting in uh, uh, food. Maybe uh, maybe there is a local kitchen which makes very good health food. Maybe they could be asked to uh, you know send in the lunch once a week or once in a fortnight or once a month. So that everybody gets a taste of health because one of the biggest bottlenecks is that we are used to a certain food, uh, our home food. Now if at home we are not uh, knowing the recipes then we never get exposure. So this is for exposure to good different kinds of healthy recipes, different kinds of, uh, you know, things to eat. And of course, connected devices also give you some measurable goals. Uh, one of the things which uh, uh, my young colleague Nitin also uh, reminded me was that my mindfulness is very important and the young generation obviously is more conscious about, uh, you know, uh, stress management and the, and the many apps which are available of our stress management. And I think uh, Nitin mentioned that Headspace and Calm are unicorns in their own right because they are doing such a wonderful job. Uh, they're US-based companies, but they are doing wonderful job in terms of mindfulness, which is deep breathing, meditation. And it's all through an app. The lovely part is it's all through an app. So you don't really have to pay a lot of money to join these courses. Now, very quickly, I come back to individual health. 
so that was about corporate wellness that how as as uh, as senior people in the companies we can bring health to our own employees who need it the most in these times of stress now one thing which is very important is like we all know ayurveda talks about gut health and gut health and detoxification is at the center of current day research which is happening in the us so recently i had the good uh, fortune of interviewing two celeb celebrated people in healthcare one is dr alihandro younger and i'll ask nitin to share the slides later uh, where i have started a health program with him and he's a cardiologist and he also advises many of the hollywood actresses and actors and uh, in his interview we talked about gut health now what is interesting is about gut health is 90% of the cells in our body are bacteria viruses and fungi and all these are called microbiome and 90% of the diseases can be traced back to the gut 80% of the immune system is living in your intestine how would i mean many of us actually would be surprised to know that 80% of your immune system is living in the intestine and this immune system is creating some molecules which are active in the nerves so neuroactive active they they can they influence the nervous system they they are messengers for the nervous system and they take that information from the intestine to your brain so many times when we are anxious when we are worried it is also a vicious cycle which is going on between your intestine of what you ate and how you are anxious if your intestine is calm you will feel calm if your intestine is having spasm gas acidity then you will be anxious even more now the uh, 50% of the microbiome structure depends on your diet so this is fascinating that your intestine controls your nervous system because it's sending feedback and 57% of this intestinal feedback which is due to the microbiome or this whole environment of bacteria good bad and the food and everything together is dependent on your diet and only 12% by genetics that's very very crucial for us because we think that oh our dad had diabetes so we'll get diabetes or oh, our dad had hypertension so we'll get hypertension so we kind of imagine that now it is written in stone because it's part of our dna but that's not true only 12% impact is by the genetics and the rest is all your own uh, health which all, where the gut health is uh, prime that is the first doorway to your health this is a very fascinating slide it is a, it's a little uh, busy slide in the sense that it has a lot of technical information but i'll try to tell you in very simple terms that the intestine and your brain are connected right and the catalysts are your uh, gut bacteria so let me give you an example when we take too many medicines antibiotics painkillers what happens we are destroying our gut bacteria we are destroying the intelligence which is living in our gut bacteria and that is why that after we recover from a infection we, we still for weeks and months are not feeling optimal we are not feeling active and healthy we are still feeling a little low on energy because the gut bacteria has not come back so it is very important to uh, make sure that our gut bacteria is healthy by putting in a lot of uh, by eating a lot of probiotics by eating and one of the things which is very nice uh, in kerala which i like is coconut water what a beautiful thing coconut water is is so full of electrolytes it is so it is like a medicine for liver and i'm sure you must be knowing it better than i do that coconut water was actually during the world wars even used as a drip because they they did not have uh, normal saline so that was the level at which coconut water could be used so it is an excellent uh, balancer for the body if your intestine is unhealthy you will also have problems with sleep if you see they're all connected sunlight uh your gland which is pineal gland which is also called the chakra the sahasra chakra and i'm sure all of you uh, must be aware that the chakra system of the body so sahasra chakra which is the pineal gland is connected with two things it is connected with sunlight which sets your circadian rhythm your body rhythm you know you everybody has a clock and this 
sunlight is what is kind of resetting the clock, the body clock. And uh, it also resets your sleep cycle because the body needs a cyclical act activity and then sleep. Activity and sleep. And the sleep is the time when the body actually, many things happen during that time. The first thing which happens is that your body starts regenerating. You know that we we'll keep losing our cells, our intestinal cells, our skin cells, everything, our, our heart is uh, rejuvenating, our liver is reju rejuvenating. So all this rejuvenation happens during sleep. Uh, and if we don't get proper sleep, then we start aging. <clears throat> the accelerated aging which happens is also because of lack of good sleep. Second thing which sleep is responsible for is a hormonal balance. So a lot of people who do not have good sleep actually start having insulin disorders, which is a hormone. It starts, they start having hormonal disorders uh, and many other conditions which are connected to the circadian rhythm. And artificial light actually disrupts the cycle. So for people who are not exposed to sunlight at all, though I don't know if in Kerala it happens, but in big cities like Bombay, there are tall buildings with no sunlight. And a lot of people don't get sunlight, which they should. And they are inside the building the whole day. A lot, especially the ladies and the, uh, the senior citizens. The men still go out. But the senior citizens and the ladies uh, do not go out as much. And they are not getting the... Uh, they're only getting artificial light. So this is something serious. Because this leads to multiple health problems. Depression is one of them. But it also imbalances our entire body uh, hormonal system. So for some of you who might like to... Uh, you know, know more about it, we will share this presentation and uh, you know, you can go through it in detail. But things which disrupt the gut biome like stress, antibiotics, soda, chlorinated, heavy chlorine water, pesticides, the imbalance starts there, then we are not getting enough exercise. So a little about exercise and I think this is very important. A lot of my friends who are in the top corporate uh, fields, what I have seen is that they are getting slip disc. They are getting severe back problem and some of them have actually also got surgeries done. Now, why does this happen? It, it is not genetic. It is not genetic. So if I look at the body and I'm just saying, this is the front of the body where you have your ab muscles and this is the back of the body where you have the spinal cord. Now, the posture, the S posture of the spinal cord depends on how strong your back muscles are. If your back muscles are weak and our posture is also not good and we are slouching the whole day on chair, then what will happen is that the back muscles will not support the spinal curve. And in the front is our ab muscles. And if our ab muscles start getting a layer of fat or a tummy, then it is pulling the spine forward. Of course, there are other things also which I'll explain. It's pulling the spine forward. So look at how much stress and tension is on the back. And finally, there's a slip disc. So which means how do you protect it? Two things is your ab muscles need exercises. It has to be strong. They are your core muscles. They hold your body together. They hold your body to get uh, straight. So your core muscles need exercises and your back muscles need exercises. Otherwise, slip disc is not far away. Especially for two other reasons. The first reason is a consumption of sugar. When we consume a lot of sugar, it steals calcium from our bones. And when it steals calcium from our bones, the result is that our bones become hollow. When we do not exercise, the muscles which are supposed to give strength to the bones and hold it together, they become weak. Now imagine the scenario, the bones are becoming hollow and the muscles which are supposed to support the bone are becoming weak. And that's where bone problems start. Now the bone problems could be anything. It could be slip disc, it could be arthritis, it could be osteoporosis, it could be fractures, uh, it could be nerve compressions. So multiple problems start because of this. So something which I would recommend to everyone is that core muscle exercise and back muscle exercise is a must after the age of 40. And we must stop sugar in a normal diet, uh, ideally it should not be given uh, till five years of age. There is no sugar requirement. And after the age of 40 also, it's good to stop sugar. And if you have a sweet tooth, you can take fruits, you can take jaggery, 
and you can take things which are more natural rather than white sugar. Now I come to detoxification. So while I have given all the problems, I am I'm sure you must be waiting for the solution now. So the solution is detoxification, which is of course uh, sleep, two to three liters of water, activity, and alcohol in moderate doses, not too much. Uh, food which are high in probiotics and prebiotics. So probiotics, obviously, many foods are there, like curd is there, fermented foods are there, and prebiotics are any fiber food. So for a gut bacteria, which is a healthy bacteria to remain healthy, and a gut immune system to be healthy, we need a lot of fiber. We also need the fiber because the fiber actually within itself has a lot of vitamins and minerals which are locked into the fiber. So when you remove the fiber, you also remove the vitamins and minerals. And we all know that, which is very paradoxical actually, and I, I talk about this, is that if you take dalia, porridge, whole wheat, it is not expensive. You refine it and remove the nutrition, it becomes more expensive. Then you further refine it, you remove further nutrition, it becomes more expensive. Finally, maida and suji, which is from Dalia, are the most expensive and it has nothing in it. Nothing at all. And yet we pay more to get that. So I think somewhere we need to change the cycle and not pay more to get less. I mean, as a business person, I don't understand how can we pay more and get less. So I would say that, and, and uh, it's very also important to have anti uh, antioxidant rich food. And I will talk about some of the good antioxidants. First is Amla. Uh, now, uh, the story about Amla and one of the biggest brands, which uh, is an internationally, uh, the first brand of the world was born in India and it's called Chavan Prash. Now, the beauty about this brand is that it's thousands of years old, named after the founder or the creator, Mush Rishi Chavan. And till today, it, we follow the same brand name called Chavan Prash. So that's what I'm saying that in India, I think the beauty of Ayurveda is so much. And I think some of you might also know the story, which is that Rishi Chavan had a proposal for a uh, from a king or for his daughter, a princess. And uh, Rishi Chavan realized that since he's a little senior and he's not healthy uh, or rather, uh, you know, as fit as he would like to be and the princess might be unhappy with him. So he started this anti-aging recipe. And this anti-aging recipe today we know as Chavan Prash, which 80% in Chavan Prash, of course there are 41, 42 other herbs, but the 80% of this recipe is based out of amla. The beauty about amla is that if you dry amla, the vitamin C is not destroyed. If you uh, keep it for many months in the powder state, the vitamin C is not destroyed. If you add it to dals, uh, lentils, it is not destroyed. Whereas all other groups of vitamin C, which is your uh, orange juice, lemon juice, uh, and uh, you know sweet lime juice, all of them, the moment you take out the juice, over a period of few hours, the vitamin C gets destroyed. So this is the beauty about Amla and this unique thing that, the, that it preserves its vitamin C under difficult conditions. Another antioxidant is uh, alpha alpha seeds. So alpha alpha seeds are extremely rich in minerals because the roots go very deep, 20 feet deep into the earth to extract the minerals which are not available otherwise. Then also we have something called Himalayan berry, which is basically leh berry. So these are small berries which grow at high altitudes, Kargil, Leh, Ladakh. And in fact, how I discovered this was that I was uh, looking at some of the researches of DRDO, which is Defense Research uh, Institute, which is a government of India Institute. And they give this Himalayan berry powder to their soldiers, you know, some products of Himalayan berry to their soldiers. So I found this very fascinating that it is a very good antioxidant, which is anti-aging. It protects against heart disease, cholesterol, uh, damage caused by diabetes. So it is something which uh, is a good, good to consume. Tulsi is also very uh, uh, useful. And uh, now I want to share two recipes. So I will just request if Nitin can become the host and I'd like to share two recipes, which uh, we are uh, 
sharing with all our uh, uh, customers clients yeah i'm just sharing it then then is the co-host yeah so yeah is it visible yes uh, can you share the recipe yeah we are there so if you can see there are two recipes which i have here put up one is an immunity boosting juice which has one amla one apple two tomatoes 100 grams of beetroot bottle gourd which is loki mint ginger rock salt and this himalayan berry powder it is not only good for boosting immunity but it is also excellent for the skin so all the people who uh, feel that their skin could be better i would recommend please have this empty stomach uh, every morning the second is a decoction or a kada or a, uh, you know like a uh, a cooked uh, decoction which has cinnamon powder 2 grams ginger crushed 1 tablespoon tulsi of course we all know black pepper so all this you have to boil in water and once it becomes uh, uh like a decoction like the you know the water changes color and at that time you add jaggery and uh, you can um, actually sorry i munakka you have to add while boiling only and then once you get off the flame you can add jaggery and give it to uh, you know anybody in the family and drink this uh, once a day at least so that uh, it it boosts your immunity by the way this immunity boosting decoction is from the department of ayush so it's not my recipe my recipe or my organization recipe is the uh, skin juice this decoction is from the department of ayush uh, <coughs> can we have the next slide so this is the uh, yeah the next yeah the last yeah uh, uh, nitin can you just put up the vedic cap slide so if you see the vedic app is what so i had a dream and my dream was when i you know initially when i got from medicine you'll be surprised as a doctor we were taught no med, no nutrition nothing i had zero knowledge about nutrition and uh, in uh, so when i got into this field of preventive health care i self taught myself and the area where i was most fascinated was ayurvedic nutrition and i realized that ayurvedic nutrition should be given free of cost to the whole world because it is an asset which uh, is useful for everybody and therefore in this vedic app which is inspired by ayurveda uh, all the nutrition uh, knowledge is free of cost there are diet plans there and there are uh, weight loss recipes and uh, many other features like knowledge center videos information and if you uh, download and explore this app you will see it will be very useful and this is also something which can be uh, uh, you know knowledge itself is a good start to taking healthy uh, steps in the future uh, can i have the next screen uh, this is also a community so what i had was uh, wanted was that you know we can only get healthy if you are in a community and if we are not in a community health is not possible in fact there are uh, books uh, there is a blue zone in japan uh, and in uh, some parts uh, some other parts also of the world where the entire village is minimum age is 80 plus of course the youngsters have gone to the cities to work but the senior citizens over there the average age is 80 plus and there are people who are living there who are 100 plus 100 500 600 and so that whole village was studied to see what is really good about that village you know what was the biggest thing about the village a very strong community which was doing things together which was healthy things together and of course as a community when you do something together like for example today if i go out to a birthday party most people will say no no you have to have fried food no no you have to have high sugar food but imagine if slowly slowly in community groups we start cooking health foods then it will become our culture to eat healthy and nobody has to feel embarrassed because they don't want to eat high sugar food or fried food or they don't want to eat things which are unhealthy for them and this i'm saying with a lot of responsibility because all said and done after the age of 40 45 our bodies are not the same and if we don't take care of the body uh, it's very hard for us to manage the kind of stresses 
and the 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 pressures which are there on our uh, on us as senior management people and i'll give you a small example that you know when we uh, our soul and i'm this is i'm speaking as an indian uh, we all understand the concept of a soul the soul needs for the soul the body is its palace we make our beautiful offices beautiful homes uh, you know beautiful uh, colleges and schools and i have seen some wonderful and beautiful uh, i have actually seen some wonderful auditoriums in kerala which are huge 1000 people auditoriums but the body if you really look at the body that is the real house of our soul if a body is healthy it's a palace the soul is living in a palace if the body is unhealthy it's living in a broken down house so i think it's very important to understand that we need to begin first with our bodies and to look after our bodies so that when there is any crisis we are fit and we are healthy to to deal with that crisis so this community is a actually a free community anybody can join and uh, people can uh, you know ask questions and the answers are given free of cost uh, there is no charges for this and our doctors our dietitians we have a very large team of about 200 doctors and dietitians uh we have a 200 team uh, strong team in our company so in which of course there are many people doctors dietitians and engineers and other people but they but here in this community we encourage people to ask questions so i think now we should take questions uh, uh, from the audience because i think we have uh, have i exceeded my time if somebody could help i think me. i think we are on time huh? we can take few questions so over chat we have received a question from uh, premchand So, in the current situation of lockdown and strict restrictions on moving out for senior citizens, they are forced to stay in. So, what kind of a diet would be advised for such a person? The first thing I think for senior citizens, the comorbidity has to be, uh, you know, managed. So, if a senior citizen has, say, diabetes, I would say that we should start having. Uh, we should shift. Not, uh, you know, we should not give like idlis of rice. Maybe we could try other grains. Like we could try quinoa. which is a very low sugar grain and make idlis out of quinoa or make dosa out of quinoa similarly we could also look at uh, making a dosa out of uh, sattu atta sattu atta is basically a little bit of chana and other grains mixed together similarly if we have to eat rice why not switch to brown rice why not make products out of brown rice or food out of brown rice second thing is i think a senior citizens must uh, also get uh, like for example if they are diabetic then fenugreek seeds so sprouted fenugreek seed is a wonderful thing to control diabetes naturally and uh, similarly curry patta is good for cholesterol uh, google and i'm i'm sure all of you must have heard of not the google but the google which is ayurvedic google is excellent for cholesterol management and uh, there is there are many herbs uh, which are good for cholesterol management for example milk thistle uh, is a herb which is very good for cholesterol management so if one is having more of these kind of things that control the uh, the comorbidity uh, another thing which is very important is i think that we are not having enough uh, salads and vegetable juices now i know that in india we do not like to have uh, salad leaves because we, we worry about the insects and all but like cucumber tomato or maybe little bit steamed broccoli so i think we need to have one bowl of salad for lunch and one bowl of salad for dinner as part of our meal sprouts i'm sure sprouts would be something which is uh, uh, acceptable for most people so what you could do is that with uh, you could uh, take sprouts the best is to eat them raw but if you can't eat them raw especially senior citizens you just put take them in a sieve like a uh, you know like a channi or a sieve and pour hot water so it will become little soft and you can add a uh, uh, little bit of uh, pomegranate to it and you can add chopped apples and little bit of peanuts and maybe grated coconut and it becomes a very nice dish it's it's a whole meal by itself so i think shifting uh, at least i think the diet should have at least 30% of raw food which means fruits and vegetables and salads like vegetable juices like what i just mentioned Yes, ma'am. So there was a question about nutrition supplements, which uh, come in tablet and other format. So, what is your take on that? This question is from Eldos Isaac, just for the sake of the viewers. Yeah. So, see, 
the ideal is obviously natural food because absorption is the best and uh, natural is always the best but for people who might be having a condition uh, you know they might require supplements and uh, especially uh, you know mothers who are expecting and if their folic acid is low or their b12 is low and uh, and they are already started their pregnancy then they need supplements immediately to fulfill the levels uh, but otherwise uh, i think natural is always better like you have beetroot juice you have uh, you know all these have natural vitamins and minerals yes ma'am so there was a question from uh, babu netty garden so he is asking uh, can you please share your comparison on merits of yoga versus exercise at gyms and what would you recommend for a person who is 50 plus i would say see i wouldn't say that you should do either yoga or exercise i think a little bit of both is very good and now why i'm saying so is because yoga is excellent because it's a full body and mind and hormonal exercise which means that if you do the surya namaskar then all your internal glands are also getting exercised you know different different postures they're also balancing your hormones which is your insulin which is your uh, you know endocrine system so it gets it gets balanced but some of the exercises like for example in the gym which people like to do is like the cross trainer or maybe uh, you know the step up uh, or skipping so many of these exercises you know they bring variety for so what i'm trying to say is they bring variety to the program or to the to the exercise in fact i must say that i don't know how many ladies are in the group uh, but uh, ladies who do classical dancing it's such a beautiful exercise why don't i mean if you start practicing your daily uh, you know uh, if you uh, do your uh, riyaz or your practice daily uh, bharatnatyam or you know any other form of classical dance whatever you have learned uh, is also exercise and it is also to the tune of uh, many uh, you know music which is your shloka so that's also beautiful so i think it depends on people you know some people like swimming some people like yoga some people like variety so one day swimming one day yoga so depends on your own persona your own personality type yes ma'am so there was another question on uh, energy levels so during this period what to do uh, to combat low energy levels also if you can suggest something about the food items or the dietary advice for depression right that'll be helpful for depression i think i would say if you do a detoxification that is you start your day in the morning uh, when you get up have two glasses of water and then after that have a hot cup of water with little bit of turmeric a pinch of turmeric and then after that uh, you freshen up take a shower and have the vegetable juice which i have mentioned and then after half an hour have the kadha the decoction and then have a big bowl of fruit a big bowl of fruit you know fruit itself is is very cleansing for the liver uh and then of course after half an hour or one hour you can have uh, whatever cereal you are having which could be uh, you know of your favorite choice which could be either a brown rice idli it could be a dosa or whatever i mean sprouts maybe whatever you are fond of or oats uh, that could be there uh and then for lunch uh, have a light uh, lunch in the sense that uh, have a bowl of salad and have you can have brown rice and vegetable curry or something or you can have uh, uh you know like a uh, of course uh, the i don't know if chapati is a thing but you could have some other uh, you know cereal with it but in the evening make sure that as the sun sets you start having very light meal i mean at least uh, the day you're trying to uh, have light food that day avoid your dinner and have just soups and salads that's all and then slowly slowly you will see that you will feel energetic because a lot of times when we only have cooked food and we never have any fruit or any other raw food or vegetable juice what happens is our digestive system gets fatigued there's a lot of fatigue in our digestive system and that sets off tiredness and even aging if you eat only cooked food and no fruit no salad the aging is very fast wonderful ma'am so there was a question about the right level of oxygen so what are your views on that and how to basically increase lung capacity to increase lung capacity i think uh, multiple things can be done like for example uh, you know uh, uh, you have the lung capacity increases when you are deep breathing or when you are running or you know when there's aerobic activity so aerobic activity which could be running which even swimming increases lung capacity a lot so swimming aerobic activity dancing deep breathing 
all these increase your lung capacity and uh, and it is very important because if your lung capacity is good then you can fight viruses in incidentally in a in a in a normal sedentary life or sitting posture we only use one third of the lung so if the lung is this much we only use this much and the rest of the lung is collapsed you know and it's uh, and it is a place where a lot of bacteria can ferment and and, and build so when you do deep breathing you go to all the parts of the lungs and open up with oxygen and and basically all the negative bacteria the, the anaerobes you know are killed by that oxygen yes, sir. so there were few questions on the recommended hours of sleep one requires if you can pay some light on that that'll be helpful so for normal people for people who are not uh, into yoga for normal people uh, you know for the younger you are more sleep you need that means children need uh, eight to ten hours of sleep then little uh, teenagers also need about eight hours of sleep and as you become a little older you need less sleep uh, but definitely if you are exhausted mentally uh, you need uh, seven hours of sleep but if you're doing meditation and this is very fascinating if you're doing meditation you actually can go without too much sleep because meditation is deep relaxation is a very deep relaxation so but i'm not suggesting that you should compromise on sleep i think you should just add meditation to your routine uh, second thing i would say is that whenever in our organization a uh, lot of patients come so we treat about 3000 patients every month we have seen women have a low level of vitamin d and b12 very low levels and both are connected with the uh, uh, virus infections and bacterial infections in fact a research study has seen that if your vitamin d level is normal and you get covid virus you will recover soon but if your vitamin d level is very very low very low then the chances of recovery are very thin so this is not being discussed as much which i wish was being discussed that how nutritional deficiency can lead to covid fertilities yes ma'am b12 and vitamin d are a must and of course if there are uh, uh, you know folic acid is also important so uh, nutritional deficiencies can lead to serious problems Yes, ma'am. So there was a question about your views on naturopathy. I think naturopathy is the first line of treatment. You know, and I'll give an example which uh, I am. You know, uh, I keep giving at many forums. Is suppose you go to the your community center or your club, and you slip and and there's a swimming pool, and you slip and fall into the swimming pool, and you don't know how to swim. The lifeguard will jump in, save your life. and you will thank him you will feel grateful to god you will tell your family that god saved me today and after suppose one month you again go to the center and again something happens you fall into the swimming pool this time the lifeguard will tell you sir you need to learn swimming because you keep falling into the pool and you don't know how to swim so as doctors this is the feeling we get that doctors are rescue they are like lifeguards you know you you go into a hospital with a crisis the doctors will jump in and save you and do whatever it needs to be done but once you go home i think it is important as a doctor i am telling you you need to learn how to live healthy because every time the lifeguard cannot come and save you so living a healthy life is part of i think our skill set like we learn how to drive how to cycle how to operate a laptop i think how to live a healthy life should be taught as a fundamental science uh, to every human being because crisis a doctor can manage but lifestyle is not a crisis it is something which we have not learned on how to take care of our bodies so like i always say that i'm sure there are a lot of men here and they love machines they love the fancy cars and they love all the equipment and the you know the latest phones but as a doctor i can tell you the most beautiful piece of machinery which we have is our bodies it's so beautiful it is so amazing that i think uh, you know we know very little about how beautifully it works and i think if we look after our bodies uh, we can you know till the last breath whether it's at 100 years or whether it's 95 years we can be fit and healthy and very very productive yes ma'am due to limitation of time we will just take two more questions So there was one question from Indu Jairam. What is the best time to take protein? So here I think we can discuss both the natural protein as well as supplements. Uh, I think uh, natural protein. Uh, 
uh, you can take uh, during the afternoon. Uh, it's you know proteins you should take during the pit time. I mean, uh, I'm sure many of you know bath, pit, and cuff, which is a fundamental uh, you know understanding about uh, human body and the energy system or the prakriti. <clears throat> so, uh, protein should be taken during the time from uh, sunrise to sunset, and they are best digested because the metabolic uh, energy is very high. Uh, of course, uh, late night eating is not recommended for uh, anybody. Uh, and at night, one should have just uh, if it if you uh, skip if you miss your dinner, uh, then I think at night soups are easier because they don't put load on your stomach. And uh, uh, so it is important to make sure that your uh, carbohydrate consumption is more in the afternoon. Protein can be during the day, and. Uh, in the morning, it is more fruits and, and things which are easily digestible. But again, having said that, it doesn't mean that you cannot have a bigger breakfast. You just have to give a gap between fruits and your breakfast. I mean, you should not combine cereals and uh, fruits together. Okay. So we'll take one last question. This is from Mr. Rakesh. So he's asking, uh, what are your views on veg versus non-vegetarian diet? Okay. So... What I feel is that uh, in Ayurveda, and I'll only quote Ayurveda, uh, that in Ayurveda, there is no uh, uh, do's and don'ts that don't eat this or don't eat that, or there is no morality or religion around food in Ayurveda. So both foods are good. Uh, you just have to balance. So for example, if you're eating more non-veg, then you have to make, the body becomes very acidic. The body with non-veg food, the end product of non-veg food is very acidic. So then you have to make sure you're having lots of vegetables, salads, vegetable juices, fruits to balance. So Ayurveda is a science which, it's not a dogmatic science. It just says, learn to balance. Like for example, Ayurveda doesn't even say don't have alcohol. No, it will, if you're having alcohol, balance by having uh, fruits and other things which can protect your liver which can uh, make sure that your liver is healthy. So I think it is all the science of balancing, balancing everything in your body. In fact, Ayurveda talks about the different rasas, you know, the salt and the uh, sour and the sweet, that all rasas should be there. And even uh, in, uh, in, in creative art, we say that the all rasas should be there. But the, the main thing which it talks about is balance. And that is why I find Ayurveda very fascinating that unlike uh, what I used to do as a young doctor, don't do this and don't do that. Now today I don't say that. I just say balance. Krishna, that was a wonderful session. So there was one confusion about Munaka. So for the benefit of the viewers, it's basically raisins. So like grape raisins we have. So there are raisins for also uh, the gooseberry that is Amla. Okay, it's basically raisins. Okay, thank right, you. Right. Yeah, thank over you, to you, Dr. Mr. Jibu. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Doctor, for the very informative and uh, you know, it was an excellent session. You view the chat box also. Telling it was an and we have got so many uh, million dollar tips for nutrition uh, uh, balance. As well as, you know, thank you for the personalized nutrition advice. Thank you so much. Uh, now I invite. Uh, Secretary, Mr. Please. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, President Jibu Paul and all KMA members. Let me uh, first of all thank our uh, Vice President, Ms. Uh, Nirmala Lili, for having brought in such a wonderful speaker today evening, uh, Dr. Shika Sharma. Uh, it was indeed a fantastic discourse on our health, especially in these COVID times. I must say it has thrown a lot of light into how you can maintain your immunity and uh, go ahead and uh, keep yourself fit and fine. I think the major takeaway is that the right diet, with the right exercise, combined probably with uh, vitamin D or sunlight would keep one healthy and immune to many of the many of the problems that today we have uh, or rather what we are facing. So, um, 
Dr. Shika, thank you so much for even sharing some of those diets with us. And I feel that, you know, all these uh, new generation gadgets that you were talking of uh, all, always help us, in fact, you know, to keep a tab on what we are doing and, you know, on the health. And there are lots of uh, health apps that also keep us going. Uh, on a personal side, uh, both of my elder children who are uh, doctors have got those apps on their uh, phones, although I don't have one, but definitely I do have a, a, a watch that, you know, tells me that, you know, I have completed my exercise ring and all that. But uh, apart from that, uh, I'm not too uh, much of an exercise freak, but still, uh, all your inputs have been very great and I think I'll try to follow many of your, not only me, everyone sitting in this meeting room, definitely have lots of takeaways this evening. Thank you, Dr. Shika Sharma for being with us. We know that you're a great, wanted speaker across the country. And uh, thank you for having uh, been with us this evening. Once again, I thank you, uh, Vice President Nirmala Lilly, for uh, uh, being with us this evening and uh, past president and program committee chair Raj Mohan Nair for uh, again organizing this great, se great session. Thank you. President Jibu Paul, of course, from leading us from the front and the secretary, the entire secretary team for organizing the meeting. Um, thank you everyone for joining us this evening and uh, I'm sure that we, we are going to have many more leader, leader talk sessions. Uh, secretary, please uh, remind, uh, please rem um, uh, remind the um, uh, Tuesday's meeting also. Yeah, um, Rajmohan, you can announce that once again. On yeah. Tuesday, we are having a, the next session. I think you have already said that in the beginning, but can you please, right. can you please highlight the speaker once again? That Ajay Mehta. Ajay yeah. Mehta on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. Ajay Mehta. Uh, Nokia fonts, uh, Global Head. Yes. Nokia Global Head. Yeah, Nokia's Global Head, Mr. Ajay Mehta will be speaking to us on Tuesday evening. I request everyone to join us uh, on Tuesday too. Once again, thank you everyone and uh, thank you. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorary uh, uh, Secretary. Uh, and I would uh, also would like to thank uh, uh, Nitin. Uh, I think it's a doctor, is it, ma'am? No, I'm just, I'm just helping Dr. Shika with the webinar. Yeah. Oh, Not okay. a doctor. So, so, thank you. Thank you. A very, uh, young and bright colleague of mine. He uh, is from Kerala. And oh, I see. Okay. Done is IIT Chennai and uh, I am in Ankitna, and he is uh, leading the initiative uh, for uh, you know the entire. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Nitin. He was coordinating me with all this uh, event. So thank thanks for the support. Yep. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Shika. Dr. Shika, one more, uh, one second. Somebody is um, uh, asking for the is it the uh, eldest for uh, this honey is uh, good for diabetes. Uh, so, uh, so honey is actually uh, uh, called a medicine in Ayurveda, and it has to be, but it has to be original honey. These days, you get a lot of uh, sugar-based honey, which is not that good for right. very small quantity, very very small, like a medicine. Yeah, and one more thing, Mr. Nitin, uh, uh, please. Uh, uh, also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, we, can connect, yeah, we can connect yeah, please, offline for that. Yeah. yeah, please share that so that, you know, so many people have asked that we will listen to them. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you all my dear members for participating in the... Thank you everyone. Thank you so Thank much. You. Officially meeting is closed. Thank you. Uh, Bridget, uh, unmute all. So if we can fellowship... Uh,